Right, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be the last of the math um, example videos for a while. I've got through my, my list of material examples. Um, if you do have any other questions about Unreal Math Shader stuff, uh, let me know and I can cover it. Um, I've skipped over the dot product. That's in another video which I think is already up. So um, we're just going to be looking at one of the really powerful things we can do in shaders in 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 game art but specifically in Unreal here um, and that's using World Position Offset or WPO so if we have a look I've just got my favourite EV square material assigned to base colour but I've also got this vector parameter plugged into my World Position Offset so what's happening here, if I put this back to zero here's the object, that's where it is in World Space uh, that's where I've placed it, but I can also move it before it gets rendered. See that? See, so it hasn't actually moved the object. If I select it, the pivot point is still here. What's happening is the the engine before it renders those those verts, before it draws those verts on screen, it's moving them off by this value, uh, and this value is in world space. So. Um, pretty useful if you just want like a little minor nudge you can move something not really very helpful because we could have just moved it uh, so what else can we do uh, that is going to be a bit more exciting well if I open the material on this one here I'm multiplying by the vertex normals what does that mean well let's open this object in here I should have a option so the normals face outwards from the surface um, so if I multiply by the vertex normals, if I say maybe 5, 10, 50, see it's making the sphere bigger and it's actually pulling the, the cube apart. If I open the object here and have a look at the normals, oh, not vertices, the normals. see maybe in this corner, so the, top, so the, the top faces normals point upwards and the, outward, the sideward ones point outwards uh, and that's why we get this hard edge. That's how the shading defines this as a hard edge. So where you've got a hard edge, things will break apart, as we're getting here. Where you've got a soft edge, like we had in the sphere, it's just going to expand. Uh, and we can start doing things like, I don't know, using a sine wave. So if I try this. Let's oh, get the right things together. We can see we get kind of a pulsating, bouncing sphere, which is pretty cool. Um, works for the sphere a lot better, obviously these broken edges not so nice and it's going in and out because obviously sine wave goes from positive to negative values we took the absolute of that it's just going to ignore those negatives and we're going to get something that's kind of like jump 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 one here multiplied by an amount so it's probably doing it, but it's probably only doing it by one unit. It probably isn't enough to be visible. And there we are, you can see that kind of like bouncing, pulsating effect. And it's just picking one sine wave, taking the absolute of it, so it goes up and down. And we could obviously clamp our sign as well. Get this kind of like occasional pulsating beat. Make kind of like a, a heartbeat effect or something like that. Uh, and we're not doing any really complex thing here, just taking the values from the sine wave and adjusting them, but we're doing a little bit of movement um, and that's happening obviously in the vertex shader um, which is pretty cool. Um, what about this one? Here, very similar thing, but I'm using the world position as the input to my sine wave. Um, This moves along in the world, it's at different points in the sine wave, which is pretty cool. This is how you would do something like a like a water surface maybe, something like that. You'd use your, your world position horizontal values, so in this case I'm using just masked in green, and then sailing along. Um, this is quite a low res mesh, so just bear in mind that if you're doing any kind of deformation, um, it can only do deformation where there are verts. So we're getting this kind of zigzag effect here. Hopefully you can see on the sphere it's a bit more lively, a bit more blobby, uh, a bit smoother. They're good words. Um, 
and so this obviously has a lot more verts. I turn on wireframe, vertex colors. Um, a little tip: if you want to see the wireframe and you don't want to see the uh, the background, if you turn on vertex colors as well, it just shows you the wireframe on its own. I don't know why would anyone would want to see the wireframe on the outside sky sphere, but there we are. It's a little hack you can do. You can see both, so you can see that obviously this has a lot more more geometry. Um, let's open that back up. Uh, and there's other things we can do. So here we can use a texture. So since DX11, it is that's what it says here. Um, we can actually use textures in our vertex shader. Um, so anything that's happening here is happening per vertex. Um, so it's usually, despite being quite complex, and uh, it's usually pretty cheap because we're just using some maths and we're only doing it per vertex. And this sphere only has, I don't know, 500 odd vertex vertices. Um, but if you think about how many pixels are being rendered on the screen, it's actually quite a lot. So anything we're doing per vertex tends to be pretty cheap. Um, and here I'm just using a noise to move along. Um, and you do get some sort of comp compression errors, but you can see how that could be quite useful controlling things with a little bit more complexity than just sort of simple sine waves and things so um, it's pretty cool and then the final thing that I want to show here we can use vertex colors so every mesh we can have in Unreal we can paint if I just flood this to be white let's flood it black Those black. now wherever I paint white I can also move my vertex offset Effectively, I'm making kind of like a little sculptural tool part of my shader, um, which is pretty cool. This is you wouldn't want to use it for a lot of high detail stuff. That seems like a terrible idea, but um, just to have a little bit of extra move, movement, bit of motion where you need it, bring things up, um, it can be pretty powerful. And you'll notice this flickering happening off screen. Uh, it's to do with the object bounds. Um, I do have another video about object bounds so if that's something that's happening to you go and have a look. Um, basically the object is outside of where Unreal thinks it is if that makes sense. It's a quick fix. Just up the bound scale. That's now going to be twice the size that Unreal thinks it should be. See that big blue square? Bounds are huge. Should, hopefully fix that flickering. Um, but yes, there is already a video about that, so if you want to find out about that. Um, so that is the world position offset. There is so much you can do with this. Any kind of little animated fish, birds, uh, plants, anything that wants to move. You don't want to give it a full skeletal mesh, you don't want to do a full animation on it. Just give it a little bit of world position movement, um, give it a little bit of sway, that kind of thing. Um, and if you start combining two or three different wavelengths together, um, you can do some really cool complex stuff, stuff based on object position, stuff based on, on world, this kind of thing, um, or stuff based on like masks painted with vertex colors, all this um, is, is able and really powerful. So hope that is helpful. As I said, this is going to be the last one of these for a little while. Um, if there is more math stuff that people want, let me know uh, and I will try and put something together. But um, until next time, I hope you've learned something and